I'm going to be breaking down two projects. Um, the first one is the entire pet commercial. And the first time I'm breaking this down anywhere or to anybody. Mm -hmm. um, so you yeah, are lucky. This is where you clap now. <laughs> and then you come and put face here so that you can clap the blood. Yeah? <laughs> So, um, the creative bit for this project. Please, if I'm too fast, you can drop me to calm down because I can finish this in like 15 minutes. We've got this creative brief. Um, we have WhatsApp. Was it WhatsApp? It was WhatsApp and one meeting like that. <laughs> that you might tell me to, to laugh at me. <laughs> Before you see about that meeting, let me just say one thing I saw about that meeting. In that meeting, you know, there were. I agree to sign some people, some figures I've never heard in my life before. And I want to sign like different brand ambassadors. They are calling some amounts. Then I ask them what's their budget for this commercial. It's not even up to 10% of some of those amounts in order to pay like this artist. Um, but I mean that's that's the story for that day. But we got this creative brief. Um there was a and shout out to Jordan. This project was another project Jordan believed in me that this guy called the best can deliver. So it was my um, John the Baptist in that creative team, yeah? So, I mean, this is what a brief looks like if you, in case your client sends you any other thing apart from something like this. <laughs> you can go back to them and say, you will need to hire a graphic designer for a brief. But I mean, not all brief will come like this. This brief has been treated already. Uh, shout out to Jordan again. He did like 80% of my work. He had, he had broken the brief down into scene by scene direction for the project. So it was more like a pretty, this is how we want to shoot it. Just come and call action on set and give us the final output. Yeah, that was the direction for this project. And we had zero to no time to execute this project. So there was no even time to go back and forth of, um, trying to create a treatment again because the treatment already exists. There's no back and forth of trying to do long pre-production because they called me like I think two weeks to launch of this project and it was a perilous times. So I mean, but because even if there was like no time, I still have to do research to figure out how I intend to approach the project. And this were like some of my research. Um so some of the transitions you see in the video, I, I could not find some of the materials again, so sorry. But these are like the few I found. This was like my main reference for the project. So I like to approach a project having a reference in mind, a creative reference that serves as a guide when I'm going into the project. So I know that if at all I fall short of any other thing, this is my base. So the project can be better than this, but I don't want it to be below this. So this project is by Major Alabi. The Malaria Project was like my creative reference into the octet. I'm sure it doesn't even know this um, sound though. Anyways, go and look for Malaria Project online. Um, then some of the transitions were inspired by this Nike commercial that I saw, a long, saw a long time ago. So if you go to my, if I open my Instagram, no sound again. No sound again. Thank you very much. If I open my Instagram, I have a lot of saved items that I've probably seen somewhere. I'll just save it because it will be useful someday. Um, there's a folder on my laptop called Vibes. In case, no, why did I say the name? I'll change the name now in case you ever find my laptop so you don't steal all my reference. But that folder is, I make sure that every day I add at least one, one video to that folder. So I, I, I'm big on research. Even when I don't have projects, I'm checking out stuff. So that project currently, last time I checked, has, has about 2,000 plus videos, commercials majorly, and maybe a few documentary. Um, so, I mean, like I said, I had like this reference idea, um, this transition reference. So when I saw the script, this idea just came to my mind. That this is how I want this transition for the ball to go. Now, some of you don't read the commercial again because you've seen the secrets. Anyways, <laughs> did more research on... Sorry. So, 
when there's no time to create treatments, easiest easiest thing to do is to go and do a short list. Um, even when they're trying to create treatment as a director, you're expected to have a short list where you're going on a project. But me, I'm a very oversabi united guy. When people are just writing short lists and saying close up white shot, you know, I go to look for picture reference or how how of how I want want each frame to look like. I don't do storyboard. I want to start doing storyboard now because no time for reference again. But I spend time enough in research to go and look for pictorial reference of how I want each scene to look like. So this is me breaking down the script into like scene by scene. I intentionally made this small so you know see it's don't worry. It's it's I no. <laughs> uh, but this is scene by scene breakdown on how I want each shot to look like. Um then we go into casting, yeah. Um for this project we didn't do a lot of casting, it was just me trusting. Yeah, backtrack a bit. So when this project came, it was like I'm used to doing projects of like maybe five million, three million, and all that. It was not, that was not scary. Can execute that and move on. If we spoil that project, we also want payback here. Yeah? But for this particular project, the budget was about twenty something. I can't remember. Twenty, yeah, twenty three million. When I got the budget, I didn't knew that this project I cannot do it alone. It will not be me myself and I, or just me and just my guys. Let's go and do it. It's a bigger project. It requires some level of expert, expertise, yeah? And I've been on set before. So this is me. Even when I'm not working, like when it's not me directing, I have friends around that are like either directors or um, DOPs, yeah? So when I'm not working, I like to go on set to assist them or to just learn some. Because I'm also a DP, but I didn't just develop myself in that light. Um, so I like to go on set to just assist them. So one of the sets I went on, I met Ebuka there. And just by just observing Ebuka and seeing how organized the production was, I didn't make a mental note that anytime I have a production of this magnitude, it was going to be Ebuka to call. So when I got the budget for this, it was the first person we spoke. So we, we had a car conversation and I sent him the treatment. And he saw the treatment and he, was like, he saw the um, brief and he was like, mad, mad, I'm interested. So Mumu me. I didn't tell the clients that ah this budget will work. Don't worry, let's go. <laughs> then <laughs> I said I told them we got to do a breakdown. I said to me, and then we got the budget of like 46 or something. Times two of almost the budget. I had to go and beg if we got, I beg. This I've not had a project of this magnitude before. I did not know. But this is the budget that exists. So we have to execute with this budget so i mean so i just left him to undo every other thing like casting but i mean as a director you still have a final say over all these things so they will send you all these things just in case you want to be a director i'm just giving you a guide to know what to ask for from your producers when you are on a project don't just get to set and now seeing strange face that you've never saw um, you didn't approve you have to get a portfolio this is like one of my first periods, so it's not detailed. Now it's more detailed. You have options and all that. And then they will send you... What's this one? Yeah, costume breakdown. What's the stylist wants to bring? Um, Colors and whatever. This part is the boring part of directing. Sure. It's not boring. Who said it's not boring? It's not boring. <laughs> I mean, it's boring, Sha. <laughs> <laughs> then we got into production. So this is like the BTS sound now, please. Like BTS of the production. So just have an idea of what happens on set. Just bunch of people that don't know what they are doing or have an idea and expect that it to come out perfect. Okay, if you can see, all of us were still like very broke then. No, but Ebuka wasn't broke. Ebuka had money since.
I'll just skip this part because it's not, it's not important to the commercial. It's another content, but from the same project here. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it was an interesting commercial. Um, we had little or no god god challenge. Most of the challenge we had were like human challenge. Um, for example, the orange guy could not peel orange. Uh, and this was supposed to be a commercial for mastery. We were supposed to show people that we're masters at these things. Uh, the shy guy. Could not do me shy. Uh, they brought like 18 generators and none of them were starting. Um, what else? What else? Just different, different things. Uh, the graffiti wall was not graffiti anything. That's my issues. You see it in the commercial. So these were like some of the pictures from the project. Um, just BTS. Then post production. Um, this is like typical what product post production. Not typical, shall some things some of the things were like um zoom meetings with the VFX guy. Um zoom the colorist wasn't like in Nigeria, it was a uh, Russian guy and he, his English wasn't was was terrible. So communication was like a problem on this project. But now it's one of the biggest colorists in Nigeria. It's one color grading for TJ Omori now. So we are helping the industry. We introduce talents to the industry. Um but it was it was it was great working with him. Um Creed was the VFX artist for this. I almost got depressed on this project when they sent me the first draft of VFX. <laughs> I think it was a phone call with Ebuka. I was like Ebuka wait to be this so I have to go and look for that reference again that so sent to him. We're already like thinking, should I go back to National Stadium and go and do a drone shot for him so that it is perfect? But somehow, somehow, Google Earth saved the project and we need to go and fly that drone. So that transition you saw is Google Earth. It's not, we did not fly anything. Then we also agreed on some of this transition. This was me just instructing him on just to add dynamics to some of the stuff. Um, this is us, him sending me like a draft of what it should look like on Google Earth and how to achieve that here. So this is like the project. What is mastery to you? 
What does it look like? Does it look like this? Bet you didn't think this was mastery. Well, it is. Focus. Mastery is anything you put your mind to and put the work and the time into. And if you could master this, or this, or that, this, or this, or this, 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 or this, surely you can master Forex too. Because with Okta FX, mastering the art of Forex trading comes naturally. So, what does mastery look like? Mastery looks like you. And when it's you and Okta FX, that's money well mastered. How's that for mastery? Go to octafx.com forward slash mastery to get started. Ah, uh, yes. Now people are queuing in. Well, I like this. So, um, we dropped this, uh, just before this project came out, I wasn't sure the Nigerian market would get this project. Yeah, because most of the commercials in the space that we've seen were just like someone just explaining the old video and just sitting down and talking and leaving your creativity to do nothing. And this was like a different vibe where people have to just get it. Um, and coming from having challenges on sets, like the tennis girl could not, serve tennis very well. <laughs> there are a lot of challenges on this project. They're just based on talent, yeah? Um, which is like one of the things you learn on the job. So my next project now is not, I'm not working on vibes. I'm going to actually see you play tennis, see if I'm going to shoot a tennis thing, yeah? But, I mean, this project dropped on Instagram and it became a thing. Till today, I don't know what a lot of people see in that project till today. Trust me, I don't know. Because immediately we finished the post-production of this project, I started seeing the way I could have shot this project better. I started seeing mad reference that I would have used to finish the project. Probably if I shoot this project again, now it would be crazy. Yeah? But like, it became a thing and it blew up on Instagram, it blew up on socials. People saw it on TV, liked it. People would see it on TV and record and send to me. People I don't even know, we don't even have conversations. And it got into many agency conversations. I think a lot of agencies started getting it as brief from the client and saying, see this project, why can't people deliver like this? So we got calls from different agencies that we never worked with because um, maybe that's not how we work. Till today, uh, we can count the number of agencies that we worked with because God has big scripts plenty. Um, yeah, but this project became a thing on Instagram and it was a huge learning curve for me. Number one learning curve was don't give the client's price until a book has sent you budget because I almost made nothing from this project because I had to use my money to do some of the fillers, yeah? But it was a defining project for my career and I'm grateful for it. And shout out to Jordan for plugging me in in this project. And just from this project, I've gotten multiple projects. I've, at times, these projects will return back to me and they will send it as reference to me that, see what this director did. <laughs> and a couple of my projects I like that have came back. The Guinness um, commercial we did for, what's this guy? That was Prince. In Lad I've gotten that project as reference. This Guinness, do you know who shot it? Let me shoot down. Well, I mean, so projects like that has returned, and this is one of those projects. So we move to the second case study. Um, two the questions first before I go here. We have time here. How many minutes do you have? Please let me know so I can. I should. I don't like writing that much. Though. Um, this <laughs> this next project is the Abeg commercial, also like an offset of the Octa FX commercial. Um, there was a creative director on the Octave Square commercial that saw what we did on that and he just picked interest. So most of his commercials after the Octave Square commercial has been directed by me. 
the one time he did not use me to direct, he had to refund the client. I bad like that. <laughs> but I mean, so he saw he he, he plugged us into the Abeg pocket um, co- um guys and they sent a brief, yeah. But when we got to on set, we discovered that they changed their name. They're no longer a bag and they're now pockets. <laughs> Imagine getting to day one of production and you've done your treatment based on a bag, color, pellet, everything, vibe. Then you get to production and they are now pockets. What was it? it was not pocket safe then, it was po- pyrotized or something, different things, or patronized or something. We just confused. Anyway, we shall shot what we had in mind to shoot already. Um, the creative brief came in again. Um, this time, a little bit more color. Um, so this is typically what you get on like Oversabi Jordan at this storyboard with his own. This is typically what you get from a from an agency, just a bunch of words. Um, most times poorly written. Um, except once. Ex- most times, right? Let's be, let's be sincere. Well, and most times, there's a lot of writing that doesn't translate visually. Like someone telling you that, ah, um, if we can give me one lamp, but they always use like that. Like they will describe what you cannot shoot. They can tell you with a leap of joy in the art of the character. How do you want to explain that visually? You get so agency writer, make sure that they calm down. We know that you want to impress the clients, but write what can be like short, yeah? Anyways, this was, and this funny thing about most Abeg project or pocket project with short is it comes in like ballpark. It doesn't come alone. So we usually like shoot three commercials together or shoot, the last one we did was six. So we had to shoot six commercials simultaneously in the space of six days. So we are bad like that. So we bring your commercial, you can execute it. Anyways, it was that this was one press. So this is if you can see this is Abeg TVC two. So it was TVC one to three. So and another talk will explain how to achieve that. But this one is just case study on this project. So for this one, I had to make a treatment. Um I will not show you guys my treatment because I don't like to many people have stolen my treatment vibe. I started copying my vibe, and this is going on YouTube, so uh, sorry. If you want to see my treatment, become my client. <laughs> send me brief and budget, and I'll send you a treatment. Well, I mean, I wanted to show, but I, is it, do you want to see? Yeah. You see, no. One no. The no's have it. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to this. We're almost done. Sorry, please. Um, hope you guys are having fun. Does it make sense? I'm just saying nonsense. Ah, I want to see rhyme. <laughs> Anyways, so from after the treatment, I create my short list, which is even more detailed um, breakdown of how I want each scene to look like. Um, yeah, so this is short list for that particular commercial. So what this helps helps me to achieve most times is I go on set with like the number of shots I want. Every other thing that we decide to shoot is on you people. This is what I need to achieve the story. We need just three shots. If we have those three shots, we are fine. If the DP wants to be creative and add two more, if we have time, we can do it. But if you go, go if you, if you don't go to a project with this specific, especially when you are now shooting six commercials simultaneously, you get confused. You will even miss some shots that you should have taken. So this helps, like everybody just gets it on set. Oh, we're only doing a wide shot, a close-up shot, oh, side shots, then cut away, the and we we'll move on to the next um, next location. Yeah. Let's respond, yeah? yeah? Nice one. Um, then we do casting. So this casting is more detailed now. There's Instagram and do attached to it to see whether you're bringing a witch or a wizard on set and <laughs> see the character before production. Um, so this is what we send to the clients then. Those are in col- those those in color those are what the people the clients picked for the project. So we send like three or four options. I'm saying we, but it's not me. <laughs> But we send like three or four options to the client and they pick and you get back to them. And at times the clients too, they also have like people they want to suggest. So it's a two-way communication thing. Um, so if you see anybody that is black here, yeah, they did not make it. It's not like we don't want to use them for the project. So all of you that used to harass me and say, that best when I see me for your next project. It's not like we know to send your picture. Go and pray that when the client see your picture, they will pick it. And so the decision is not just my decision. Um, it's... 
everybody's decision, yeah? Um, yeah? yeah? Nice one. Then we do location. Um, the location guy sends us like location reference. At times, they don't send us anything. Because what they'll send you is what to key your career. <laughs> so once in a while, when you go to find place, take the picture and have it, have a mental note that this place, um, it would make sense. If like if I want to shoot a coffee shop commercial, no, I know this place don't do. You get because I know this place. I will not wait for a location guy to go and send me somewhere in Agege that they are selling tapioca. <laughs> you get. Um, so like for example, this office. No, not this office. There was an office scene. That office there. That Rasta office space. That Rasta office space. What is too <laughs> Was somewhere I went to do a meeting with somebody and I just saw this space and I said, and I just knew it would work for a commercial. The commercial it would work for, I did not know. But when I got this brief, I just knew, okay, this is the perfect place for this commercial. Um, This place, me, Ebuka and I had seen it on like social media and it was colorful enough, and I figured if we're ever going to do high energy, young, this is like the opening scene. So if you go to places like that, once in a while, we get like, just have it in mind that oh, this place will make sense for this command. Like this place now, I get like idea for um, this landmark, but they never bring the budget to go shoot town. Anyway, so when you go out like that, try and have that mental note if you're ever going to be a director that this place will make sense for this, this place will make sense for this. So when the location guy sent this one, we added the one we have in, we had in mind already and we sent it to the client. Um so some most things most things in commercial you have to communicate it with the clients. It's not just on your vibe. They are not dropping you millions of naira to go and do your own thing. You get well, you go refund though. Um then I think this is BTS okay, that's okay, not okay, finished okay, yet. Commercials for Abeg and Piggy Vest. The interesting thing is that we're shooting all six of them in just six days. It's a tough task, to be honest, to do six projects simultaneously, but it's not an impossible task. <laughs> Big Piggy Vest TV series. We live. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's so awesome. In three, two, one, and five. BTS filmmakers, they come to you. If you like those fans, as well, you go big for for public. One and five. Action. I'm making what's going to be the most watched commercial in Nigeria for 2022. Anyways, they are still editing this BTS. Uh, okay, I added one or two more, please. Should I know my work? Then, oh, this is one of the challenge in filmmaking in Nigeria. God can just decide to send you rain. <laughs> it was a very sunny day. We're already ready to roll. I think we already rolled one one take and all of a sudden it started raining. My brother, what are you gonna do? We have to wait for the rain to stop. But that was like a blessing in the guy this guy's cause. The scene we later shot was like now sunset and it was a perfect time to shoot. Um yeah. We are still working on the BTS edits it's with like the third editor now that's supposed to get. <laughs> Once they get it, we'll post it. It's supposed to be a series. Um, that has like the experience and said, I'll just give you a walkthrough of how the production went. Um, post production for this, um, post production, this was so I had to work with like four different editors for the entire six projects. So it was me, um, Ebuka sent them like a written brief, they had a meeting with them. Um, then we just went through like different vibes of how we intend to achieve it. So they sent first court. I give my um, opinion or things I think um, we could change. Then we go back. So I can edit. I can edit myself honestly, but I like to work with the editor because I believe that there's something someone else will bring to the project or a perspective the person will bring or a creative side the person will bring 
that I ca- I will not bring. So talk to directors that I did say myself. I'm not that director. I like division of labor. So um we had like awesome editors worked on this project. Um Oye Joseph, um Bidemi, um Ayo, then there's one other person. There's one other person, Sha. Sorry for that person. I can't remember now. Um so this is the commercial. Your online sales, payments, and transfers can go like this. Send the money, though. I'm sorry, sir. Please, I've still not seen a letter. Are you sure it has gone? Or like this. I have gotten your payment already. Thank you. Oh, but it's good. I will finish it today. Oh, which kind of wall I'll be this now? Ah, mad, though. Too clean. Too clean. Oh. Your business delivery can go like this. Good afternoon, sir. There's a package, sir. I'm so sorry, bro. I don't think I want this anymore. Only as you have the Or this. Here's oh, thank package. you. Yes, ma'am. The payment was already on standby when I ordered. Uh-huh. So you should have it now. Thank you, ma'am. You can either get this when you use your app to transact. Hey, God, oh. I thought they said there's no service charges or hidden charges. Ah! Pass this place first. Or this. Remember that stuff I paid for yesterday? Yeah. I get a bonus every time I pay with pocket. No way. So, you can risk suffering PTSD every time you try to pay or get paid online. Or you can just choose your peace of mind when paying or getting paid on your Pocket app. Choose ease, choose Pocket. Buy, sell, pay, and get paid with Pocket app. Now, Pocket start first clap. <laughs> Anyways, and that brings us to the end um, of my presentation basically um so far the last screenshot i made of these two on my own page i don't care about the clients on my own page who have seen i care about the clients sorry i care about you people you see this video <laughs> um without post boosting any of these posts i have over 400 comments some of them i didn't i probably replied only like 20 people in that 400 this one we had over 279 comments over 12,000 views over 19,000 views on both commercials, just on my page. That's And the commercial is not for social, it's for TV. So imagine the impact on TV. Yeah, so this is some of the comments I got from people when they saw the Octa FX commercial. And that's the end of my presentation. Special sh- thank- special shout, please. It's important to special thank- thanks to the brands, agencies, and creatives I've worked with so far. And this is like my mantra. I stay hungry. Um, I'm never satisfied with my last projects. I want to do more. And I stay foolish. Know that I don't know anything. I need research. I need to keep myself updated. I need to get references. I'm not creating out zero. I'm creating out of what already exists. Just making it better. And that's the end. My showreel. My latest showreel that has like some of my interesting projects that I've worked on so far. It's on social media too. Your online sales, payments, and transfers can go like this. I'm oh, sorry, sir. Please, I've seen us in our lens. I should. What would your life look like if the world revolved around you? And all you had to do was keep moving towards your goals.
I think I think we can do better than that. That that was an epic ending, right? Like that was awesome. That was awesome. You know the honest truth about it is there are talented people here in this country. Like life, right? Like we go outside to look for inspiration, but we do all some things here. And the best is really an inspiration. So let's put our hands together for him one more time. Make me not give me work, I beg you. Sakwa don't want to give me. All right.